Help me welcome to the show our next guest. He's been performing magic all over the world for the past 30 years. Uh, he's the master of illusion. He's got a big show coming up at the Park Theatre. Sean Watson. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great and to be here. Thank you, Nelson. Also, his lovely assistant, Chanel Monroe, is here joining us today. So, Sean, it's great to have you on the show. It's been a while. Thank you so much, Nelson. Yeah. It has been a while, and it's just, I'm so happy you're doing so wonderful, and uh, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me on your awesome show. I figured, you know, anybody with taste in hats as good as yours, I had to bring you on the show. <laughs> I was just thinking that, actually. Yes, we all have amazing hats. It's, it's incredible. Fantastic. It is. I'm curious. I read on your website you've been performing magic for over 30 years. Yes, that is correct. I, did I, you start when you were two years old? When did you start? <laughs> well, my uh, age is... is an illusion, obviously. <laughs> um, I started actually in Winnipeg. Um, I started when I was 12 years old. Um, uh, my dad actually helped me get into magic. He stumbled upon a toy store in Winnipeg called uh, Toad Hall Toys. Oh, yeah. And it's an amazing toy store. In the back of the toy store is a, is a little magic store, and a magician is there showing you tricks, and then you buy a trick. So my dad was there at lunch hour, and he stopped by upon Toad Hall Toys, and he saw a magician. And um, yeah, he. he he was amazed, and he said, my son will like that. Because I had a lot of challenges in school uh, with ADHD, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of learning disabilities, uh, speech impediment for one as well, too. So there's a lot of them. So I had a lot of troubles in my, uh, in my school. So my dad always wanted to find something for me to grasp onto and take to and then thrive with. So it was actually magic that uh, changed my life. Yeah. And my whole uh, story is actually uh, was featured in this uh, article. Um, this is a Vanish magazine. And uh, they're one of the biggest, mag well, the biggest mag magic magazine uh, for magicians there, there, there are, actually. It's an incredible magazine. It's on my website. If you go to Sean Watson Magician, uh, dot, dot com, uh and you can read the article. And it's about me, um, you know, uh, my upbringing with my, dip my difficulties uh, as, a, uh, as 12 years old, as a teenager. So there mm -hmm. you go. Yeah. <laughs> so when you were 12 years old, did you start performing magic right away? Yeah, I did. I did. I started uh, doing birthday parties in Winnipeg, okay. uh, uh, bar, bar mitzvahs, bar mitzvahs uh, community events, uh, all over the place. I played pretty much everywhere. Uh, Nightclubs yeah. uh, in Winnipeg. You know, I started out in uh, Palomino Club, uh, Pony Corral. Um, you know, ice works uh, yeah, everywhere. Scandals was my very first big gig in Winnipeg. Uh, and we were talking before the show, and Chanel, you have uh, an album that you're working on now. Yeah, um, so I was working on the album actually right before I met Sean, so that was sort of the artistic path that I was going in uh, before I discovered magic and training to be an illusionist. But yeah, it, it sort of came about because um, we met right before COVID, and he had a bunch of shows booked on uh, northern reservations mm -hmm. and northwest territories and whatnot. Um, and he knew that I was Métis. And so he asked if I had anything that I could talk about before we do the magic show, um, anything to do with indigenous issues. And I said, well, I have this whole Manitoba Métis music album that I'm working on. And so he said, let's have a listen. And he really liked it. And it had sort of gone to the wayside for me for artistic purposes. It had kind of gone to sleep. But he sort of reawoke it and reawoke my inspiration for it. So, mm -hmm. yes, I have the demo and uh, just working on getting it professionally produced right now. Yeah, that's awesome. I was going to say, if your day job is getting sawed in half, then your only options for a future career are music <laughs> or horror movies, one of the two. <laughs> yeah, you, you got to keep it on the up and up. Yeah, so, so how did you end up getting involved in the magic? Um, it was just a, a happy-go-lucky, lackadaisical story. Um, I was waitressing at... Um, this awesome restaurant called DJ's in St. James. It was mm -hmm. like a St. James staple. It's been there for 54 years. Really awesome pizza. And I was just doing my bartending gig, and Sean walked in and sat down for a drink, and we started chatting, and he checked out my Instagram and saw that I was a performer, singer, dancer, mm -hmm. and then asked if I had ever considered being sawed in half before. I was going to say, it's a really odd pickup line, Sean. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to chop you in half one time. <laughs> well, the pickup lines actually weren't working. <laughs> and then he pulled out the magic tricks. Mm -hmm. That is yeah, correct, actually. Yes, yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I actually have a trick for you, because it's, okay. uh, it is Halloween. Sure. So let me, uh, let me see <clears throat> something here. Let me make sure my hands are warmed up. I kind of feel like uh, Spider-Man there for one second. Ugh. What's up with that? Uh, a letter. Uh, actually, I have over here some, um, some paper, some tissue, actually. Watch closely. Check this out. Look at that. It's a pumpkin for you, Nelson. Nice. Look at that, buddy. I'm going to eat little it. little pumpkin for you. <laughs> but, That's uh, awesome. Yeah. Let me show you, actually, some, uh, some, some, 
some good stuff here. A uh, deck of playing cards. Let's go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, when I was 14, I had that same problem with tissue sticking to my hand. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, take one out. Have a look at one. Uh, don't make me influence you. Pick any card okay. you want. Anyone. Uh, yeah, obviously, no. Okay. Uh, we can't uh, have any volunteers. It is, uh, you know, in, in the show, we, like I said, it's uh, social distance, so we can't uh, use any volunteers. So what we're going to do, actually, is we're going to do like this. I'm going to uh, rip some cards down like this, and you just say stop whenever you like. Just say stop. Stop. Do you want this card, or do you want this card? I'll take that one here. This one right here. Yeah. Fantastic. I have over here a little marker. Uh, I want you to think of a number between 1 and 1,000. One one thousand. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Uh, I'm gonna go with seven sixty two. Seven seven six two. So I'm gonna show the camera. Seven six two. On the ace of spades. Fantastic. Now um, you obviously can't touch the card. So this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take the seven six two. I'm gonna take it and place it inside the center of the deck. There's a center right there. Actually, it's not the center, but I'm going to get the cards a little cut. Bring it closer to the center. I'm going to try to find your card using my cell phone. Watch close. Cell phone's right here. Cards are right here. It's going to happen on the count of three. Watch closely. Check this out. One, two, and three. There's actually a card. Whoa. Look at that. Inside my cell phone. Let me go ahead and put the card, actually pass the cards to Chanel. I don't know if you can see this. It's actually right here. Let me pull it out of the phone. Nelson, what number was your number? What was it? 762. 762. Look at that. There we go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how the hell that's possible. <laughs> That trips me out. Okay. Um, so once again, a uh, deck of playing cards. They're all different. You can see how different they are. Um, mixed up. Mixed up. Okay, yep. So are the cards. <laughs> I'm going to give the cards a shuffle. Now, obviously, I can't get you to uh, take one out. So uh, do me a favor. Just say stop as I riffle through the deck of playing cards. You say stop as okay. I riffle the deck of playing okay. cards, and that will be your card. Here okay. we go. Stop. Just before that happens. Okay, here okay, we go. One, again. two, three, and... <laughs> Stop. Right there. All right. I already saw that. That's a four times. I already saw it. I did not see this one. I'm going to hold this up right here into the camera. You got the card memorized. People at home. Awesome. And Nelson, you got the card memorized. Got it. Yep. Awesome. I'm not going to look at it. Actually, I made a prediction before the show even started. Uh, I drew it onto this pad of mine. I have right over here. Your card. For the very first time, what is the name of your playing card? Three of diamonds. Three of diamonds. Whoa. Wait. <laughs> Yo, I can't believe I messed it up. Ace of spades. Was it really the three? Three of diamonds. Wasn't it? Nope. Black? Nope. It was red. For real? Mm-hmm. Look, this is the top card of a whole entire deck of playing cards. <clears throat> Your card is inside the deck of playing cards. Watch, just think of the three diamonds. Think it, think, okay? Think, think, three diamonds. Wow. And Nelson, have a look at this, buddy. Look at this, it's only ink and paper. This is for you. Look at that, it's only ink and paper. I'm gonna leave this for you. Okay. Uh, don't touch it, right? Just give it a, give it a bit. Wow. <laughs> uh, and the Chanel's performing. Uh, in the show as well too, and she's incredible. Not only do I make her disappear, cut her in half, and blah blah blah, uh, she actually performs in the show. I was so. gonna ask, do you do yeah. magic as well? Um, so I did learn my first magic trick, which is walking through a solid plate of steel. So I will be doing that, but more going back to what I was doing uh, before I met Sean. So I'll be singing a little bit and dancing a little bit. Are you familiar with the Steve Miller band? And I there's, absolutely am, yeah. Yeah, and you know their song Abracadabra? Yeah. So I do like a creepy sort of spooky cover of Abracadabra. Perfect for, for Halloween. Halloween. That's awesome. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right on. So where else can get people get tickets from the Park Theater? Yeah, uh, the website is myparktheater.com. Um, and then my website is seanwatsonmagician.com, obviously. But yeah, just go to my park theater. Um, yeah, to get tickets. And I don't know, I don't know what we can talk about or can't, because I know magicians never reveal their tricks. 
but I'm very curious about the magic industry, especially not just from your end, but from the assistant, because when I watch the shows, it's incredible to me the stuff that you guys go through in the shows, and I'm just wondering, when I see you in these little boxes getting stabbed and cut up, like, do you have to be like a contortionist to do this kind of thing, or? <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, like I say, I, I was interested in dancing and doing a lot of dancing before I entered into this, I think which is part of the reason why Sean thought I would be good for the job. Yeah. So I do have a dancer background, and so yes, I do think it's an important component. And as well as you want to have stage presence, you want to hold your body in a certain way, yeah. you know, you want to be commanding. And, you know, lo and behold, I had a theater degree from the University of Winnipeg that I did nothing with. For years until now so yeah. I knew that it would come in handy one day that's awesome so how long have you guys been working together for uh, we met in December and we started rehearsing um, in February and then we drove to Calgary and we were doing our very first show in Calgary and it was cancelled for COVID mm. so yeah we've been working together since february but sort of you know a work but also we actually had a, a, tri a trip uh planned to peru and uh and actually we had to make a decision on our flight uh, you know was on monday but we had to make a decision this is on sunday if we're gonna go to peru or not oh yeah I, you know I, I, but i'm happy we decided not to because yeah. we can still be there right so. yeah <laughs> I mean, not the worst place to be stranded. No, yeah. Yeah, in the mountains, you know, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's been sort of a whirlwind. It was, it was definitely heartbreaking for me because this is the most amazing career that I've ever chanced upon. And mm -hmm. then it all sort of got crushed kind of in an instant, yeah. you know, like, like everyone's going through a certain type of grief yeah. with uh, the pandemic. But, you know, more and more, we're just... We're figuring out ways to pivot and yeah. do virtual live ma magic, um, how to do shows in a safe, responsible way, mm -hmm. which um, we did have two weeks worth of shows in Waska Sioux, Saskatchewan. Mm -hmm. And it was wonderful, especially to perform for kids. Um, like kids were just so hungry to get out and see something yeah. live, as were the adults. So, you know, I think if we keep doing it in a safe way, that it's yeah. actually quite uplifting for people to come to our shows. Absolutely, and I mean, they, yeah. they need something right now because everything is getting canceled. I was gonna say for myself, I had a lot of comedy shows that got canceled, mm -hmm. and I, I follow you on social media, yeah. I'm a fan, yeah. Yeah. and a friend, yeah. and uh, I was really impressed at how you've been able to keep somewhat busy yeah. throughout all this, and, and how well you guys are doing for sure. social distancing and, and keeping people safe. So yeah. I know yeah. that that's probably a concern with uh, everything that's happening in Winnipeg right now with things being shut down, but it looks like the expectation is by October 31st, things will be out, back up and open. And John Watson and Chanel Monroe, everybody, check them out October 31st at the Park Theater. That's fantastic. That's and we're going to come back with Chanel singing a song for us. So, me meeting Sean was sort of a love story mixed with tragedy, mixed with art, and a bunch of different stories combining. Um, right before I met him, I was working on a Manitoba Metis music album. Um, which had kind of fallen to the sidelines. Um, and I was also taking care of my mama, who was very sick. Um, so we started rehearsing, and Sean bought me a plane ticket to Vegas, and we were supposed to go to Vegas and do all these fancy shows, and then my mama passed away. So Sean was with me through my deepest, darkest thing that I've ever gone through in my whole life, even though he had just met me. And he was encouraging me to get this Métis album up off the ground because that was my mom's wish of what I do with my life. Um, so this is actually a drum that I made with my mom. It's, uh, it's not real animal skin. Um, this is actually a drum that we got from Superstore. <laughs> and they had um, smoked salmon in it with like tin foil on top that we ate. And then my mom was like, you know, this would make a pretty cool drum. So we cleaned all the salmon skin off of it and drilled holes in the side and strung it up so yeah this is uh it's my drum so this is a song that i performed at the tommy prince memorial um tommy prince is one of uh, canada's most decorated aboriginal war heroes um i had the honor of meeting his family and playing the song at his memorial so this is a song for Mama and for Tommy Prince. I 
And when he crept up in his moccasins, that's when the enemy would fall down. And the tribe chanted, death of a warrior, death of a warrior, death of a warrior. Hey ya, hey ya, hey yo. tonight matt falk check him out at mattfalkcomedy.com also october 31st don't forget sean watson and chanel monroe will be at the park theater check out sean watson's website www.seanwatsonmagician.com also on instagram sean watson magician uh, on instagram and check for chanel monroe's album which will be coming out sometime soon thanks again for watching <laughs>